Yeah, I'm complaining about <gasps> ass, right? Like un unspeakable. An anime fan who's not what turned kind on of like red blooded American <laughs> male are you? That Sir. sounds, John, that sounds like communists talk to me. <laughs> Goddamn commies. I swear I'm not a red. Hello, everyone. It is that time of the month again. Time for Anime Club After Dark to pop a squad and hit you with all the best and worst of what we have been indulging in recently. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai. And tonight, I am joined by our czar of source material, John. Is it my turn? Yes. Yeah, I said your name, <laughs> so yes. I don't know why I thought you were going to introduce Shinoda first, but maybe that's because of the last well, episode we recorded. Yeah, during our last recording, you wanted me to. <laughs> yeah. Which has which isn't out yet, but you'll you'll see it next week. I promise. They won't uh, we next all... week. It'll be the week before this episode, right? Will it no. be after this one? Is It'll this... be oh. out. It comes out after this one because this one comes out. We're, we're recording this on Monday. It comes out next Monday. You guys are flubbing this so hard. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to hear anything from you who can't remember things for five minutes. Anyway, you kawaiist baka or whatever the fuck you want me to call you, Chinoda. That's not his title. That's not. Hello. <laughs> and why e is baka? Kawaii e s baka? That's I don't know. That's what it says here. I'm just reading what he wrote. I I don't have the document up. I can't confirm nor deny your pet name. Why do you, you not have? Why? Do you not and also, have I just the like to say, up? I just why like would to say, I have it up? <laughs> because you need it for what? <laughs> for the, the things you're going to talk episode. about. I hope. The things you're going to talk about, I hope. Is this not a movie review? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, John, I just want to say one Chinoda on this podcast is enough. I don't need to. I can only do so much. <laughs> He's done. You're going to need. Chinoda's it. done. You're going to need way more evolutions than that. Does that have all Dude. of the evolutions? I don't know. Uh, if it has, does it not yes. have all of them? Yes. I don't know it what has the latest Sylveon ones on are. Here as well. Latest one is Sylveon. Is it Sylveon the, the latest one? Yeah, the fairy. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, I would just like to say, Chinoda, from a from a linguistical standpoint, the most kawaii baka would be a lot easier to read. Anyway, we're here to talk about uh, what we've been watching recently. Um, I want to say up front, <clears throat> number one, I don't have that much to talk about. In fact, I only have one thing to talk about um, this month. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that up front and get it out of the way. Um, I wanted to talk about this last time, but we ran out of, of time when we were recording. I think John actually had something he had to go do, so we had to end a little bit early. Um, maybe I'm thinking about the time before that. But anyway. I don't uh, know. No, it was John. Do you know how many sleeps I've had in the last month since we've done a monthly dump? <laughs> At least four. At least four whole sleeps. Uh, but no, I've been watching the um, second season of the Nier Automata anime adaptation. Um, I've talked about it a little bit here and there. It's really good. Um, the first season was really good, but this second season is, like, even better. Um, the first season pretty much adapts all of ending A, and then season two is going through the other endings. Um, and I'm just, it's had me thinking, first of all, uh, Natsuki Hanai, who is voicing two or, uh, nine S in this, he also voiced, um, nine S in the, the game. Cause they brought all back, I think most of the voice actors from the game to do the anime adaptation. Mm -hmm. Um, he's doing a better job in this anime adaptation than he did in the game. Not to say that his performance in the Nier Automata game is bad. It's not. But he is going way above and beyond in this uh, in the anime adaptation. It's fucking phenomenal to see. Now, when you uh, say it's all the other endings, is that going to be, like, all the funny endings, too? Like That I don't, I don't think so, but, like, all the mainline endings. Okay, so, like, I think it's A, B, and C? Yeah, and I think they're going to go with C for the very end. Right. The, the true ending to Nier the, Automata. The, the true ending. Um, Which was one God, of my I complaints about Nier. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many people played Nier Automata, but... You should, if you I, I really liked playing Nier. Um, but it's great. I don't it's a phenomenal like, game. Well, I don't like that it doesn't force you to play through, through ending B and C. 
because yeah. there was a lot of people who just played through ending A and was like, oh, that's the game. And they didn't know that they had to keep playing. It's like that that wasn't the end of the game. <laughs> yeah. There's two more endings you got to go through. And it's just like, oh, because it feels like it's weird that when you beat it through ending A, then you got to play through ending B where you play as 9S instead of 2B. But it's like he's way weaker and not as fun to play compared to like or not nearly to good to look at compared to um, 2B. That's debatable based on who you ask. But <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> To me, it was, it was not pleasant to look at compared to two B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I get it. Um, I first of all, if you haven't played the game, go play it. It's it's a it's an amazing game, amazing story. Um, they're doing a phenomenal job adapting the story for an anime adaptation, which is one of my fears going into this that they were gonna just absolutely butcher this narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, they have not. Um, they have done a phenomenal job. They've even added some stuff to it for like extra context that isn't in the game, um, which I liked. Um, but it's also had me thinking about like video game adaptation or anime adaptations of video games, right? Because there's a tendency for them to be either mediocre or just downright bad. So <laughs> we've done multiple episodes about um, these, uh, like because we talked about uh oh my god league of legends right we we talked about castlevania yeah um we've done spoiler casts for both of those i'm trying to think about any other video game to anime adaptations that we've all seen and talked about sonic oh no we haven't no no that we've talked about on the podcast i know one that we did a long time ago you and i john Remember the Dragon's Dogma anime? Oh god, I forgot about that. <laughs> that was I actually awful. forgot about that. Like, that was an had... awful adaptation. It was awful for a multitude of reasons, not just because uh, of the CGI, but yeah, that I Yeah, another forgot anime about that. adaptation <laughs> of a video game we did a spoiler cast on. And which is, you know, I... it's a phenomenal game, which is a shame. I think the problem is that how you handle an adaptation in general, right? Because um, mm-hmm. I talked about this last night about like why are Hollywood movies or Hollywood studios so obsessed with making live action versions of video games? Because most of them domestically, or actually, actually, mostly, almost all of them domestically perform poorly, and yeah. the ones that have performed well only performed well because of the international box office. With a few notable exceptions. Like, the Sonic movies have done pr- very well domestically. And in terms of television adaptations of video games, The Last of Us did really well. The Fallout TV show did well. Right. But mm-hmm. I-, I was talking about movies specifically. Not yeah, I wasn't uh, going to talk about the TV shows. Cause I'm like, TV the, show Sonic ratings, movies, the Sonic movies have done really well. Yeah, and that's because they, they would have done really poorly if they kept that first design. Which I'm still Cyber, not... Sh- Cyberbullying works. <laughs> I'm I'm still not sure that was real because I feel like they made the trailer for the Sonic movie with the mm. bad model just to get it riled up because they were going to release it with a better model anyway. They made it look I, like I actual have a, Sonic. I have a better conspiracy theory about why this happened and why they released the trailer as early as they did with the really bad CGI. They okay. knew they weren't going to have the movie ready in time, and this was a way to give them extra time because they did delay the release. It. Did they yeah. delay the release? Oh, okay. They I did. They rela- They delayed it by, I think, five or six months? Maybe. But, yeah, uh, adaptations in general, ha- they, they perform very well if the people adapting it either adapted it well from the mm-hmm. source, like almost like a one-to-one. Because if the source is strong, then if you adapted one-to-one, then it, it'll be fine in its movie form. In theory. In theory. But there's also the amount of care and love for a franchise that has to go into it. Uh, yeah. Main things I'm thinking about are, <laughs> I'm thinking about The Witcher now, uh, yeah. Geralt of Rivia with uh, Henry Cavill. Like He plays an excellent Geralt and he loves the games. And uh, the guy who created it was like, yeah, Henry Cavill's portrayal of Geralt is my ideal Geralt. And I'm like, yeah, he does it really well. And then the show writers or showrunners destroyed the entire fucking thing because they decided to eviscerate the source material and just adapt what they felt like adapting. Yep, uh, yep. It's the same reason why the Halo live action performed so well, uh, so well, so, so poorly. Well. Yeah, <laughs> so poorly is because they decided, hey, we're gonna make a sci-fi in space thing, but we're just gonna call it Halo. How like, there dare was... you hate Master Cheeks? 
he Master is the Cheeks. Best of us. I mean, at least we know he didn't die a virgin. So <laughs> 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 there's that, right? There's that going for it. Uh, but if we look at the successful ones like Castlevania or League of Legends, the reason those have been so successful is because they take the source material, but they enhance it. They put yeah. a lot of care into it. Like, well, I, or in the, the, even in the like The Last of Us, they added stuff that wasn't in the in the game to like add context, to add backstory. Yeah, they had a vision. Enhanced for, the yeah. Well, they because they expanded on things that were already there, like, and them adding things. Like again, I I cannot talk about how much I love the Frank episode. It is so good. It is such a good thing because that's like. That's the type of world building shit that I love in general. Mm. So for the um, showrunners for the Last of Us TV show, for them to include the Frank episode where it's like, you know, in the game mission, we just we meet Frank and we learn about his life through notes. And it's kind of like you got to paint your own picture for them to actually just show it to us as a full episode. Absolutely adore it. Mm. And it's like Frank isn't a main character or anything. He's just a side character. But that's the type of world building shit that I love. I wish mm. more things would do that. And that's what League of Legends does. You know, I don't play League, so I don't know too much about the lore. I'm not sure how deep the lore is for a fucking MOBA. Uh, so I have talked to people who have played League, and the people who made Arcane played very, very fast and loose with the established lore. They basically <laughs> took oh. they took characters that were in the game and they picked picked like cherry picked elements of their lore and made a story around that. Okay. So they did what Halo live action should have done, which is if you're just going to borrow the IP for its name, at least make something good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they but, had a story to tell and they wanted to use these characters to tell it. Right. And I feel like, uh, you know, I haven't finished watching Nier season one. <laughs> I keep saying I'll finish it because the last three episodes released like later. Right. Yeah. So I'm on like, I got to finish watching those. So obviously um, I can't have started season two, so I haven't yeah. watched it at all. But you know, it, on the flip side of what you're talking about with an adaptation that um, uh, takes the source material and adapts it like near one for one, <clears throat> you have a, like an adaptation like what was done with Fallout, where they took an established universe and told a, an original story within it. Right, that can and work that, too. That was that was great. I love that the kind Fallout. of an adaptation can work too. Yeah, although I have to say um very nervous about what's going to happen with season two because it's going directly to new vegas so well we know that this is going to be the new vegas after the courier is yeah. done in new vegas so it's like so how canon are we talking canon because like there were some dlcs afterward <laughs> so there are some events that happened that should have happened technically speaking in game or in in world for fallout where it's like well, we don't know. There should be massive desert storms now. You, you know, know. There, there's the Sierra Nevada mist thing that should be happening. Like, how are they going? Are they going to put that? I'm very interested to see how they're going to. I'm, I'm super interested. John and I, uh, uh, shortly after John finished watching Fallout, I was in his DMs and we were doing some theory crafting, and I came up with a story I think John said he would love to see, where we would get to see our characters interact with both Courier Six and the sole survivor from Fallout Four. Ooh. I mean, that, that'd be a really cool tie-in, and it doesn't have to do anything with the video games or, like, the, um... It, it, they'd be separate universes still because it's, like, canonically... There are canon endings to Fallout games, if people didn't know that, because there are certain NPCs mm. that exist that did, shouldn't exist in certain games. <clears throat> so, it's like... Yeah. I think it'd be cool. I, I, I really liked the first season of Fallout. I, I, I'm excited to see the second season. But yeah. when it comes to, like... To, to like anime like Castlevania why was that adapted so well because uh, they took the source material which it's a game for fucking 1980 something 1990 something right yeah, like an old game with very old? it, it, it Castlevania the, the side scroller is very old I'm pretty uh, sure it's from like 87 or something or 92 or whatever the original uh, Castlevania but the, the, the original Quest, game does not have a deep story no, there's no story. It's this story that they created is just loosely based on a story of Dracula and Alucard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now but, there are Castlevania games that came later that had deeper stories. Yeah, but, but they basically took a sum of the story and then like, okay, we're gonna do it before the the rise of the Belmonts and the Hunters and stuff like that. And yeah, they performed 
spectacularly. Like, I loved the story that they made. It wasn't the best thing in the world. You know, I can't say, like, it was a 10 out of 10 show or anything like that. I had a couple of hangups yeah. with it. But I thought that the passion they, they put into it and the care that they put into it and the respect for the series that they put into it, like, when they, um, oh, my God, the song, when they replayed the song, uh, oh, bloody... Um... Uh, I was about to say bloody stream. <laughs> That's <just> so <laughs> that would be that would be a hell of a musical crossover. It's hard to play JoJo's music in it. Yeah, when they um do the revised version of that, I'm just like, uh, was it Symphony of the what Night? The hell is that no, song no, called? That's, Fuck. that's one of the games. Oh my god, I should know this, but you know what I'm talking about. The I know the song you're talking about. I cannot, for the life of me, think of the actual title of the song now. But, but my point is, yeah, like the the callbacks they do to the video games, yeah, uh, which tie into it and how they present it, like a lot of love and care was put into it, and that's what I loved about the adaptation. Yeah, and because I knew the source material itself was weak, them supplementing it and just using like, okay, well, we know that this is in general how it's supposed to go, so they yeah. just built upon that. That makes it great. So Helped for it, both Nier, the animation and the voice acting, and that was really good too. Yeah, and for Nier, I feel like in the anime at least for what I've seen from the first nine episodes, eight episodes, nine episodes, whatever, nine. which one I left on. If you only have three left. I'm pretty sure it's the only, the last, it was the last three that didn't release on time. Oh I no, the, the delays so. started before that. No, it the was, delay yeah, started was before that, but then there was like a secondary delay because I forget exactly why, but I stopped at the first, probably delay. COVID. That, that might've been episode. Five that was the first then. delay was due to COVID, but there was a, 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 a secondary delay with like the last two episodes. And I think that was due to a scheduling conflict on TV. Anyway, I'm behind on that, but from what I saw for the near anime, I was, I was like, one of the best things about near is how great it looks. And I didn't think mm -hmm. the anime looked that great. It looks okay. It doesn't look bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, but aside from that, it's uh, the other than the beautifulness of Nier Automata, uh, the story itself is pretty good. And yeah. if they're going to faithfully recreate it for ending B and C, then I will really enjoy the ending because I absolutely love the ending of the game. And yeah. again, my only complaint about the game is that you have to willingly do it instead of the game forcing you because mm -hmm. I know plenty of people who stop playing after the first ending. He's like, yeah, it was and all right. You, if and you, I'm like, no, if, that's not it. It's like it's like Dragon's Dogma. You play yeah. it through one time, you can't just play it through one time. You have to actually play it through a second time, and quite possibly a third time, to really get to know what the fuck story is about. Yeah, yeah, that's that can be a bit much to ask of. I understand it's a bit much to ask, but it's like it's part of the reason why you have to do at least for in Dragon's Dogma, it, there's a reason why you have to play through a second and third time. Um that's there there's an actual legitimate reason at least for the second one you can play yeah. through it for a third time just for fun but there there are two playthroughs required because of that yeah uh for near automata because they call it an ending it's like because it technically ends you have to play through it again but yeah. it's like is it really playing through it again if when you start up your new playthrough you play as a different character i wouldn't say so no, oh, like I think that's old. one I mean, overarching different... story. There's different mechanics when you play as Nine Ness as opposed to 2B. Yeah, he's not nearly as fast or strong as 2B, and you have to do more like parrying block stuff. And you have to do the hacking stuff as well. Oh, yeah, and the stupid hacking mini game. I hated that. That was dumb. <laughs> um, By the way, not, Castlevania, I, uh, it was 1986 on Nintendo's Famicom disc oh, system. 86, that's, my bad. 86, I was off by one yeah. year. I was like, 87? I'm pretty sure. I don't it, was, it was like <laughs> mid to late 80s. So yeah, you're. We we're, were pretty close. Um, but not, I mean, I've just been thinking about how, like, there's other video game adaptations that have not been as good. Like, we were talking about, was it last year with uh, Matilia Riza? That's an adaptation of a video game, and it's pretty mediocre. I mean, Them it was a mediocre weren't. game? So, like... <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not the most complex or, you know... The game uh, is literally about selling like figures so <laughs> and it's the same thing with like the uh the concole anime or the azure lane anime like the the story of the game that you're pulling this from is not deep in fact there's barely yeah. any story at all but or those Nekopara. are like they're they're waifu, they, they're waifu the neko an anime it yeah did. it did yeah it is you surprisingly very wholesome as well oh is neko not wholesome i don't i Oh, bro. I've had an <laughs> inkling that Nekopar was about fucking the cat girls that you adopt. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hardcore. The anime, however, is that not about is... that. 
couple okay. of teases here and there. I mean, there's there's a little fan service here and there, but by and large, the anime adaptation of Nekopara is very wholesome. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it I know. It kind of is, yeah. Why didn't uh, they just adapt it as a hentai? Like, I don't understand. They should have. <laughs> if the video Probably game is sold about... Better. If the video game is about that, like, it's like... The, I don't know. Okay, whatever. Point is, right? <laughs> Kan no. Kole and... Um, I was about to say Blue Archive, but I don't think Blue Archive has an anime yet. Yes, yet. it does. It does, does now. It does. Yeah, it, has, it, does it got now. an anime adaptation this year. Oh shit! I didn't even watch that one. Grand Blue. <laughs> Grand Blue. Grand Blue is a anime adaptation of a video game. Yeah. I feel like for the specifically the mobile game stuff. Um, aside from what MiHoYo or HoYoVerse, I guess they're new, they're called as now, uh, is going to release for Genshin. Not a lot of mobile games have very deep stories. <laughs> There's not a lot. Of content no. to pull and from them. There has there has been a Genshin Impact anime adaptation announced two years ago, and we've gotten zero announcements since then about it. Uh, they, I mean, <laughs> it was announced that they were collaborating with UFO Table. Uh, mm. Is UFO Table dodging taxes again? Too busy to, to create it? Who knows? We never know. <laughs> no one knows of UFO Table. The world can... may never know. Um, I have no idea. I do know that they recently had a new animation studio that released when Arlequino, one of the new characters, dropped. They had a different animation studio do something, mm -hmm. and it looked phenomenal. So they might partner with them instead of UFO Table, but maybe because they promised UFO Table the anime. I don't know. No one knows okay. what's going to happen John, with that. John. Imagine if it moves to Trigger. Why are you saying UFO Table instead of affordable? Because it's UFO Table, bro. <laughs> Is it? Is it actually? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Even though most people say ufotable, I we've always said ufotable, but I love saying ufo table. It's <laughs> triggering me. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are you saying? I'm Wakari Masen. I don't need hungo you. for your English, like whatever, bro. I don't know, uh, like. For for video game adaptations, I guess if you extend that though to visual novels as video games, then maybe you have a lot more examples of good anime adaptations of video games. Yeah, like Angel Bees is a visual novel, and that was fucking phenomenal. Clan Ad, Steins Gate, really? Steins Gates, yeah. Um, I know how we all feel about Fate, but Fate is so successful. So it I mean, is I can't, successful. I can't say anything else, but Fate has been made to shit ton of money, <laughs> and those are based on visual novels. Yeah, but like, fate doesn't make a shit ton of money. It prints money. Yeah. yeah, in all like, in all aspects of it, actually, yeah, it prints money. And uh, yeah. because they they have the mobile game now too, the mm -hmm. FGO Fate Grand Order. Yeah. yeah, and it is still going stupid solid. strong, super solid. Yeah, the uh, whales are in there. Yeah, I guess if we include visual novels, then there are plenty of very successful ones. But I don't really... Do you, do you <laughs> consider visual novels to be video games? No. So, well, let me ask you something. <clears throat> Hold on, I have to cough. Cough. I coughed. <laughs> have you guys played um, Until Dawn or... What's the new one? The Quarry. You know what I'm talking about. I have about. not, but I've watched people play them. No. Right. I watched Vix play... Uh, the quarry. I watched Fix play that one on stream. I watched someone else play it, and then I watched her play it, and I was just like, "Hey, I know about this." Brenda Song is in it, and I'm like, "Oh, Brenda Song. She was that Disney Channel kid." Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but well, if these you looks like scary games, no, thank you. They are a scary game. Until Dawn and The Quarry are like based on horror tropes, I should say. They're like but... thriller. My point is, the way that those video games play, play exactly like a visual novel. Now, people may not understand what I mean by that, but let me break it down. In a visual novel, you click on things and you just select dialogue options, right? Yeah. So, in Until Dawn and in The Quarry, all you do is move your character around, move them around, right, to click on things and interact and choose dialogue options. That's all it is. That's the gameplay. It's now, a Western visual novel. Well, the reason I say that is because like if, uh, anything can constitute a game, right? And as long as it's in video format, like 
on a yeah. computer, on a console, on a phone. It is technically yeah. a video game, but anything anything can be a game because you can just make games up, right? Mm-hmm. That's something that's entertaining and you waste time to do that may or may not have a goal. It's a very loose term, but it's hard for me to say a vi- like a visual novel is a video game because there's not much interaction in the game. There's a finite number of routes that you can take in a visual novel that will either lead to good ending, bad ending. It's it's yeah. so like basic routine. But click and tell games have been around for a long time on Flash websites and stuff like that as well. But to me, it's like, is it really like? Would you consider? I'm not sure if you guys have ever read Goosebumps. I yeah. Have. If anyone, all right. So they used to have the pick your own adventure Goosebumps, where it's like, yeah, choose what to do, turn to this page, and do you not know what I'm talking about, Chinoda? No, I'm wondering if was you there saw any if... other way. Was it not all? No, there's a lot no. of Goosebumps titles that are written from like third, first person perspective. But there were there were Goosebumps titles that were written from a second person perspective, where you were the one experiencing the story. I might have literally only read those ones then. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. yeah. So for the people who don't know, Goosebumps is a kid, kid, child scary books. It, I guess it, it is. Yeah. Adolescent. Um, adolescent scary books uh but some of them had choose your own adventures where like there was one i remember like i'm at a carnival or something and i have to choose my own adventure (laughs) and i remember like reading that and that's what visual novels make me think of where Mm -hmm. i'm reading this goosebumps book and i get to a decision and i have to choose option a or option b and that leads to another option a or option b and eventually i get to the end and either i'm dead or i escape so it's like would you consider those Goosebumps Choose Your Own Adventure books a video game or a game? It's I would like, consider them a game, but not a video game since it's not right. in a video format. So it's like, yeah, if, you know, technically speaking, visual novels are video games. But what I mean by video game is something that I have more input and control over, something I yeah. have more control over. But like I said, for my example of Until Dawn in the Quarry, they are considered video games by far and large. But they play exactly like a visual novel. Yeah. So you can say, ex- you, you say the same thing about Telltale's games too, like The Walking Dead. But those have like little. You have to shoot and stuff, and you have to press do QTEs. Yeah, so there there's, are QTEs. There's stuff, a little yeah. bit of difference in that. A little more interaction. Yeah, a little more interaction, but by but, and large, but, you're right. It's it's mainly but the like, narrative. The narrative it, is largely. Uh, it's largely drawn through dialogue choices. Yeah. And that's the thing with Until Dawn and visual novels and The Quarry. Most heavy gameplay gameplay of those things are do- choosing a dialogue option and watching things play out. Not you reacting yeah. to it. You just watching yeah. it play out. So that's why I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, I don't like to call them video games, but I know that they are video games because to me, it's. I think there needs to be more interaction from me and more control of me as a character. Because if you select something and it shows you a scenario and it just keeps doing that, I'm not really doing anything. Like it's not like my actions in this game. It's will just affect choose the your own path. Yeah. yeah, like in Fallout, if you choose, you know, Paladin or Renegade uh, dialogue options, but you do the opposite, there is a cause and effect to that, right? If I'm like, I'm gonna save the town, and then I fucking blow up the nuke, my karma goes down. There were consequences to my actions even though I chose this dialogue option to see what it would be, where I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll be peaceful, and then I choose not to be. So that's why it's like it's different to me. There's still interactive John... narratives. Yes, John, you really gave me a existential crisis, because I'm just like, if you do choose your own path for books, it is a game. Right? It, are books are those books games then? And it is like such a horrifying yes. concept. I'm just like, what the fuck? Well, it's because it's like, how loosely do you want to ba- uh, make the term game? Because I could say, I can argue that detective thriller novels are basically a puzzle for your brain. And puzzles are games, right? Yeah. yeah. I read a lot of detective thriller stuff and like whodunit murder stuff. I love those things because I love trying to piece together the crime myself. So to me, it is a puzzle in my mind that I have to figure out myself. Of course, it will tell you the ending, the answer to the end at the end, but it's like, how loose do you want to say the, what the term game is, is essentially my point. Yeah. So, like, yes, we should. For all intents and purposes of the point of discussion on this podcast, we will consider visual novels games. So, I will say, a lot of visual novels are mediocre adaptations, though. 
But there are. But if you but if you expand the term video game, there are more examples of good video game adaptations. The only visual novel I have ever played is the Clannad one, so I don't have a lot of information to tell you about like what a visual novel is supposed to be or most like. And but... with and with Clannad, the bad ending is the one where you have sex. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> That is true. That is all the bad ending. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> which never... is kind of rare for a visual novel. Usually the, the good the ending, goal, especially yeah. in a romance-themed <laughs> visual novel, is you hook up with your love interest. And this one, the bad ending is the one where you have sex. <laughs> it's funny. I don't think I've uh, played a visual novel since I was a little kid. So it's been a very long time. Some of them are worth playing. Um, there's some good narratives in certain visual novels. Steins Gate is phenomenal. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, the anime was really good, so I I would assume yeah. that if the anime was really good, the visual novels based on should be pretty good. But Anyway, that's all I really wanted to talk about, about how it's got... Watching Nier Automata has gotten me thinking about how there's a lot of anime adaptations of video games that have been kind of mediocre or bad over the years. Okay. Well... Speaking of something that's mediocre, man, let me talk to you about an isekai. A journey through another world, raising kids while adventuring, is mediocre. And I do not think it is nearly cute enough. I this am... is the one you were telling me about at the beginning of the season, I think when we did the um, the season preview. Because you read, you read it. Yes, I read the manga. Now, I complained about this on the Discord. Mm. Like I always do. At like three yeah, among, among many other things on our <laughs> Discord. Know, join our Discords if you really love getting the live feed of me ranting about stuff. But this isekai, Journey Through Another World While Raising Kids, is so it's so cute in the manga. Like the way the art that's drawn looks great. I love it. And you know, typically I don't judge an anime and be like, oh, it's art is trash, so it's terrible. Like I, I've seen ugly shows that are good. For fuck's sake, Clannad looks god awful, but I love it. So the story, yeah, <laughs> the story is it's phenomenal, but the actual visuals are like the bug eyes and the antennas. It's, it's like oh god, you can't unsee that. Uh, but for this isekai, it's like the story. It's always been mediocre, because you know a lot of isekai story are mediocre, if not just straight up fucking trash. Uh, for this one specifically. I didn't think it was trash. I thought it was just mediocre because, you know, a guy gets killed by a god and now he isekais into another world. And then in the other world, it's like, hey, I sorry I accidentally killed you. Also, can you raise these kids that you found? And he's just like, I guess, whatever. And that's it. That's the story. That's the premise. Now they have adventures in another world. I will say just as an anime only it's it's cute i i can yeah. feel it reaching for more like even i can tell as an anime only i'm See, like the thing is, okay you're wanting more but like you're held no, back by quality the anime is cute it has the the twins are cute it's got cute interactions but i'm saying the art itself isn't as cute as the manga i've had oh, this yeah, complaint yeah, no. about it's like a b tier yeah it's, it's like b tier animation bro and it's like i've had this complaint before about other like adaptations that oh, I'm like, oh, the manga was absolutely a uh, beautiful, and then it goes to the anime, and it's like, man, the anime does not look nearly half as good. Um, Otome Mob was one of those. Um, he re it's another isekai. He isekais into an Otome game, and he's a side character. That's the premise. Uh, the manga and the light novel are beautiful art, beautifully drawn, and then there is the anime where it's like it looks good. But it's not nearly as pretty. And that kind of detracts to the enjoyment of this thing for me because I know how how good it could be or it should be and how this studio has not captured that essence. And it kind of sucks. Like, it doesn't detract from the story or anything, but when you have a mediocre story, like Journey Through Another World while raising kids, where it's like they just journey through another world and these kids are the kids of a god, by the way, so they're like demigods i guess because their their mom is human i believe and their yeah. dad is like the water god yep and spoilers <laughs> i don't care no one's gonna watch this <laughs> <laughs> and anyone watching this for isekai recommendations probably already read this let's be honest here yeah, i understand what it's like to be an isekai fan i am an isekai fan i know you <laughs> motherfuckers can't wait to watch the animes you're probably just reading 10 different isekai manga at the same time 
while you're listening to this right now. <laughs> exactly. Listen, the story is mid. There are no trials or tribulations. There's no stakes. There's nothing going on here. And the most redeeming quality was looking at the cute drawings. And if they don't capture that essence of the uh, series, because even in the light novel, it looks really pretty, then what are you doing with the anime? Like, I don't understand who this is for. There are it other sounds shows. like what you're talking about would be fine if it were like an Iashike type anime, but from what yeah. you're describing, it's not. Yeah, if it was Iashike, it's fine because that's the purpose. It's just to be healed. But every week that I tune into anime, there are a handful of shows that I'm watching that I'm like excited to watch. And then there's a handful of shows where I'm just like, oh, that updated. I guess I should get to watching that episode. <laughs> It's like having an extra job. <laughs> kind of. And it's like, it's not bad, so I don't want to drop it. And again, I do like reading it because it looks pretty, but I'm like, oh, man. I'm just reaffirming that the story is trash. <laughs> this kind of sucks. Without the, the pretty pictures. <laughs> yeah, without the pretty pictures to distract me from how mediocre the story is, I, I'm really questioning why I like this. <laughs> oh, my God. And some of the voice acting, it's bad. Like, not all of it, but some of the side characters, the voice acting that comes from them, like, really? Really? That's that's how you chose to portray it? Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, yeah, I think it's fine. If you like Isekai, you wouldn't, you won't be disappointed if you pick this up if you like Isekai, especially if you like cute stuff and Isekai. Uh, you definitely won't, like, change your life or nothing. <laughs> you, you definitely won't go running to go read the manga or light novel or anything like that. <laughs> maybe you will after you listen to me say about how cute it is and beautiful it is and how you should check it out maybe you will and you know you should do that support the author but yeah um yeah that's all i really had to say about like <laughs> speaking of mediocre things <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it's by far the last mediocre thing you're going to talk about tonight sure uh, sure yes. let's go with that <laughs> whoa okay all right all right i have opinions you well your opinions might you get you're allowed to have your opinions they're going to be wrong but you can have them Oh, I f I it's time for your opinion, to... though, Chinoda. No, yeah. I just realized I'm wearing red. I for I wasn't supposed to wear red. That's fine. Oh well. Um, too many losing heroines is really fucking pretty. I don't know if you guys have uh checked the show out yet or not. No, but I utterly love it. It is visually a treat. I mean, cake and a half. Um. Great characters, fun, uh, fun little story, but like I'm really there for the visuals because it, it is the art in it is so freaking crisp and clean, and it had me hooked. Now, uh, the characters themselves and like the story, um, has me like it, it kept me on but like what really caught my eye was uh the visuals themselves i've been watching this from the get-go and i i just love it every single week like whenever it comes out i'm like okay i can't wait i need to watch this asap so it's this show is the one about like all the loser girls right who get rejected from their crushes yep um, so are they all like tropes of girls who confess and lose like one is yes. the um, childhood friend. Uh, one's got to have blue hair. One's got to have blue. Literally, hair. the main the main one. Uh, of course, Anna Anna Yamanai does have blue hair, and she, she does she have blue short hair. Um, no, it's not that short. Okay. Like it's medium length. It's not long, but it's not short either. Um, and like you watch two of the girls uh, get rejected uh, as well. Two of the main girls. It's a uh, Three main girls and one uh, guy, and like they all just become friends, and he just inadvertently becomes friends with them, and it's it's just a fun adventure. Now, is this supposed to be a rom com? Like, do all these loser rejected girls all now fall for the this guy? Is that the premise? I don't know because they're actual friends. I'm gonna like, say, you, probably, yeah. <laughs> It kind of seems just... like that's probably where it's going to head, but I actually don't know because, like, you you see them and you watch them become actual friends, and, like, it's still ongoing, so I'm not sure, but I'm just like, yo, this is, like, I'm just enjoying this. 
He voluntarily like, slid his way into the friend zone. <laughs> no, but, like, he wasn't after them. He was like, oh, man, these chicks are painful to watch. But, like, he's actually a nice person. Kind of a, a social loner. But, like, okay, everyone likes him. Awesome, he's an r r slash nice guy, huh? Yeah, I know. He's, but he's, he's a, a <laughs> he's a nice guy. Dot tm like, <laughs> like uh, I can I see the power fantasy now of like, no. hey, all you Stacy's getting rejected by your chads. Now you have to come crawling to me because I'm such a nice guy. Like I see what this is about. Yeah, I see who this is for. I see exactly it's, who this is for, not. John. <laughs> I'm explaining this badly, as I usually as do. you do many things. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the the show is fine. Like, I'm just making jokes. All right, but... J- uh, Jenoda, are there any voice actors John likes that play <laughs> <know>. characters? <laughs> Sari Hayami, you say? Rie Kugamiya? <laughs> you know what? I, Kanahanazawa? I, Kanahanazawa? I, I actually haven't checked. Uh, <laughs> but give me, give, give me, give me a second. Yui Ishikawa? Let's Aoyuki? see. Aoyuki? <laughs> Watch all of them be in there, and he's like just been holding back on. Yeah, I just like flip my table, dude. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, Tuno Hikaru. I don't know who that is. Uh, let's find out. She did. We don't have to go through every this single is... character, jo- okay, okay. Chinoda. I, I wasn't serious. Wakayama Shion, t- uh, Teresawa Momoka. Mm, not not really these names sound big names. Super familiar. Not. Not super familiar. I might know a couple of their roles, but they aren't on my radar of, like, these are the voice actors that I absolutely adore and I know the name of. And you will watch everything that they're in. That I hear them and I'm like, I know who you are. I must see what you're doing in this series. (laughs) Yeah. But Um, yeah, no, great show and I highly recommend it. Okay. Where is it streaming? Crunchyroll, of course. Thank you. And, Which uh, brings me to the no, no, no. <laughs> no. In all seriousness, this is like one of my top three shows of the season. Like, no joke, I genuinely love it, and I highly recommend it. Okay, right up there with Tower of God, right? Uh-huh. Uh, let's not go with that. Far. <laughs> you know, speaking of shows that I need to watch immediately when they release. Man, let me tell you about how No Longer Allowed in Another World is actually fucking fuego. The writing is actually good! Like, first of all, I love that um, the guy who voices... um, Oh my god, what's his name? Sensei? Sensei, yes, but uh, he's the guy in Monogatari. Uh, He's... Araragi? Araragi. 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 The guy who voices Araragi... Is the main character in Hiroshi no longer... Kamiya. Yes, he is the guy who voices Sensei. A phenomenal voice actor, by the way. Uh, and <laughs> the way that he plays Sensei as the deadpan character is fucking hilarious. I love it. Now, I thought that this was going to be kind of like... Um, oh my god, what was it called? Zotsub- Zotsubyo Sensei? It was the the one where he plays a... He also plays as a, a Sensei, but he, like he wants to kill himself all the time. Oh, Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. Yeah, Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. Also done be... by Studio Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Shaft and also voiced by the um, same guy who does Araragi. Yeah. Uh, but I thought the Sensei was going to be like that guy because they were like, oh, it's about a, a artist who wants to kill himself. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be like Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. But no, not even that. Like, this Isekai is profoundly funny and deep. Like, it discusses a lot of different tropes in Isekai stories. But it also involves a lot of talking about people's character, and yeah, their and like their morals, uh, ethics, philosophy. Yeah, and I'm just and like, I'm like, I I did not expect this from this show. That's like, yeah, it's an isekai where an, a famous artist tries to kill himself with his uh, lover. Author. If, oh yeah, author. My bad. A famous author. Um, isekaisms or gets isekai'd by a truck while he's trying to have a suicide pact with his lover and they go to another world that's just like proliferated with other people from um the same world and turns out they're all pieces of shit because the power went to their head by the way who actual truck con like truck con is an actual thing that yeah, is a literal a... <laughs> vehicle of the goddess <laughs> yeah there's an actual isekai service that the gods yeah. have to bring po- heroes to another world so, so, again, I thought that this was going to be a meta-commentary about Isekai. And in some form, it is a meta-commentary about Isekai. But 
the amount of depth that they show about diving into the characters of the isekai world and also of the uh, people getting isekai is actually phenomenal like the latest episode that they did about the guy in the wheelchair i was just like dude that was a good episode like what the fuck like what is what is this actual show like about what the fuck <laughs> I thought I, I thought it was gonna be one note. I thought it was just gonna be a ha ha thing, and then just watching it, I'm like, it's not. It's not just a joke. It's not just a ha ha thing. Yeah. Like it's not just ha ha. That guy's suicidal. No, like it gets actually really fucking deep. And yeah, I I'm honestly surprised at how much I like it, and I think that the the art looks great. The music sounds great. Uh, I love the ending song because it's by uh, Mayu Mishima. I, I love name. the OP and the ED. The OP is fucking fantastic. The OP sounds like the guy who sings for um It's not OXT, is it? I think it's OXT. It sounds like he sounds like the guy who sings for OXT, but but he's not. I believe he's a YouTube singer or a Niku Niku Doga singer. But okay. I do know that the ending song is sung by uh Mayu Maishima Maishima whatever her last name is. <laughs> the singer for the old singer for Myth and Roid. She sings it. Mayu Maishima uh. Okay, yeah. Uh, she does the ending song, and it sounds great. I'm just like, oh, man. It's great. This show is great. <laughs> I look forward to it. Every single uh, week when it gets updated, I'm like, I got to watch this. Like, this is with Spice and Wolf. Like, I'm like, I got to watch this. I got to watch Spice and Wolf. Um, I got to watch. Oh, my God. What was it? My Wife Has No Emotion. I, I, I'm absolutely loving that still. But I've always, like I said, I love the manga. It's gotten a lot better. Uh, story wise, because this is where the story gets better and a lot more interesting. So I'm really happy with both of these. But yeah, No Longer Allowed in Another World is one I rec definitely recommend to people who like watching Isekai because this is a. It's not like those other Isekai. <laughs> for it's sure. It's not your generic. It's not your it's grandma's not. Isekai. Well, it, it is generic in a sense, but also not generic in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Because it's of, generic in the sense that it makes fun of things. Yeah, it does make fun of Isekai tropes and stuff like that, but. The, it, it's not just meta analysis or meta commentary. Like it's not just like a Konosuba uh, ripoff or anything like that. Where it's like we're just making fun of isekai as a trope in or general. Or like, um, uh, fuck, I've just forgotten what it was called. Uh, Imminence and Shadow. Oh, or Imminence yeah. and Shadow. Yeah. Um, there are certain action sequences, but I, I definitely don't think the action sequences are the best seller of selling point of this show. But it's definitely the, the commentary. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I no, have to check I it out. Fully agree with John. It's absolutely worthwhile. Like, even if you don't like isekais, like, this is so much more than that. And it's yeah, worth it's watching. Good. Surprisingly good. I, I honestly didn't think I'd like it as much as I do right now. Sweet. There is fan service here and there so if you're averse to that or if you're into it <laughs> that warning is there i wouldn't it's, it's say very the fan service it's very is weak like... it's very weak but it is right. there yeah yeah it is there like the elf girl is kind of annoying but i'm like yeah she's kind of just supposed to be a trope i'm waiting for her to get her right. moment in the limelight like we have tama had her moment in the limelight near just had his moment in the limelight so i'm like okay the last person in the party is the elf in the party, so she needs to have the limelight in the next episode. So I have a feeling it'll be towards the end of the It has to be. Like, everyone else had their own story explained and stuff like that, and they've all been great, by the way. Like, the Tama arc, the Nier arc, again, phenomenal. Pretty great. Ah, oh, man. It's a good show. It's a good show. Yeah. Um, By the way, um, the for the previous anime I talked about, Two Men Losing Heroines, the... Um, girl who plays the uh brown skinned tomboy nana hoshi uh from uh moshoko tensei okay yeah this, there's some voice actor be a seller for anybody no, like, <laughs> nana hoshi is not that big of a character in moshoko tensei bro like a good no, but a like, good character a good but... character but not like a main character so it's like no, no, no but like you can at least make a reference to voice acting and all that but like entirely okay. different sound very great Anyways, uh, let's listen. See. You had a better hook with a, a brown skinned tomboy. Like that's that was the hook. That yeah, you that's needed. that's all I really needed. <laughs> yeah. Voice is not important at that point. Yeah, idiot brown uh idiot athletic brown skinned tomboy. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you need. Uh, Dungeon People on High Dive is really entertaining. It's all about um, basically the. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> 
oh, dungeon oh, people, oh. you people. God, Th- that's the title. Fuck off. I know that's the title. I'm making a joke. It's a bad joke. Um, what was I saying? God, completely. It's threw about me off track. a lady who's like, I need to oh, travel yeah. into this dungeon because my dad went down there and never came back, and she was raised to be an adventurer, and she's like a soloist. Who like tries to reach the deepest depth of the dungeon because that's where she thinks her dad is, and that's the premise of the story, until she yeah. gets to like level ten and then a minotaur Seven. eight, Seven? no, whatever level it was, she solos her way down to a floor that's not possible to solo on, uh, because she's just an amazing thief. Yeah, she's thief class. Uh, and then while fighting a, I think it was a minotaur or something like that, it breaks yes. the wall. So then she f- goes in behind the wall and it's like, oh. There's an actual dungeon administrator here. <laughs> and the dungeon administrator is pretty funny. She's just like, oh, perfect. I was looking to hire someone new. I've been actually watching you throughout the dungeon. And I think it, you work perfectly to work in this dungeon. So it's like a job, maintaining the, yeah. the dungeon. Yeah, and like this whole anime is about uh, maintaining the dungeon and like keeping track of it and like forming new contracts. Just all sorts of dungeon maintenance. It's basically the administrative behind the scenes of... Yeah, dungeons. Like, you gotta replace the loot that's inside of a uh, treasure chest <laughs> without the people inside of the uh, yeah. dungeon knowing that it's actually being changed. So Reformatting it's, floors, just yeah, all sorts of stuff. Hiring it's pretty, monsters. It's pretty funny. Um, Great OP, by the way. It's an okay OP. I I I'm like only, it. I'm only four episodes in. I I'm not caught up yet because I stopped watching it because I kind of got bored. <laughs> No, 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 bro, keep up. It, it actually gets even cooler. Like, it's a very chill show until the action comes up. Then you're setting up and paying attention but a- because it actually looks good and cool shit happens. Okay, see, yeah. my biggest complaint is that after four episodes of watching Dungeon People, it feels like it's just like a slice of life with like, hey, the concept is. is that it's, it's Dungeon Administration. And I'm like, oh, that was kind of cool, but that's kind of all I've seen thus far. Like you could have shown me that in episode one and two, but episode three and four is just more of it. And I'm like, this is not that interesting of a a concept. So I will say it's not, but at the same time, it's more for nerds like us that love behind the scenes stuff like this. Yeah. I don't, I, I I will eventually, um, watch the rest of it. I guess I'm I'm about to have a bunch of free time. So I guess whatever, right. I'll do whatever I need to do, (laughs) but, uh, (laughs) Yeah, I I was worried, I'd say, about, like, continuing it because I just didn't feel like it was worth it after watching episode four. And I was, like, halfway through episode five, and I was like, eh. I kind of just stopped. But, I'm, you know, I might pick it back up after I go watch the rest of Nier and go watch <laughs> Konosuba go. season two. And also Don't season say three. That. And also, like, I, and listen, also the my, Konosuba movie. my backlog of shows that I say I'll go watch, okay, versus the shows I am actually watching – Versus, I, I'm not sure if anyone else has uh, noticed this, but I started reading manga and light novels again. <laughs> yes, we have yeah, definitely noticed that. in the Discord because you are bitching about them constantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm suddenly <laughs> making myself busy again. <laughs> like, man, I have all this content I want to consume because there's other things I don't want to deal with right now in my life. <laughs> Let me run away into my fantasy books. <laughs> what a great coping mechanism you've created for yourself, John. Oh, work on a game and, you know. Hey, focus- to be fair, there are much worse coping mechanisms you could have chosen. It's not like it's heroin. <laughs> no, no, it's much worse. Much more expensive. It's much, it's much more expensive. <laughs> he does smoke, so there's that. <clears throat> That's right, because it's legalized here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, the, uh, John basically TLDR'd it for me, but yeah, no, it's a fun little anime. It's more for nerds that like behind the scenes uh, dungeon stuff. That's yeah, pretty th- much it. I mean, I think the concept of like the dungeon master is all powerful, and it's like I literally like the, the uh, main character girl who gets signed up to help with the dungeon. She tries to fight the dungeon master, and it's like she can use chantless magic, and she has like unlimited magic power. So I think it's interesting. Like, who is this dungeon master? Like, why does she exist here? And why does she or dungeon administrator? Why why is she down here to do this? Like, it's a mystery this entire time. 
And so it's I think, cool because you get little drops of lore here and yeah, there. Yeah, and like, I feel like that to me is the interesting thing about Dungeon People, but because they they breadcrumb it so slowly that I'm like, it's not worth it, man. Like, I'll wait for a TLDR. <laughs> but yeah, right. that's that's it. That's all I have to say. John? <clears throat> all right. I want to talk about a terrible fucking show. Let me talk about Wistoria Wanded Magic. Excuse me. I love the twink. Thank you very much. This show is so fucking... I like it. Bad? (laughs) It's bad, but it's good, but it's also bad. I... Let me explain. Let me... Hear me (laughs) out, okay? Wannabe mash. First of all, the concept is I am a magicless person in a magical world. And I that will sounds beat, very familiar. And I will, <laughs> I will beat them with my muscles. Right? That sounds even more familiar. <laughs> Except it's not a joke. It is a very serious show. Yeah, that, has that so sounds much, awful. <laughs> that has so much yaoi bait inside of it. The yaoi bait is okay. Okay, you're kind of bringing me back a little bit. Just but a little I mean, bad. The main character is literally a twink. But it's like bad yaoi bait because. I, I just the show is taking itself way too seriously and it makes no sense on how any of it works. So the main character his name is Will. He doesn't have magic, but he wants to be with his BFF uh Elfie who is like one of the strongest wizards in the world. And they grew up together and stuff. And I'm like the Elfie slash Will stuff when they were kids, super cute, adorable, you know? Like she literally learned how to do clone jutsu magic so she could just have Will all to herself and I'm like we it's already so got adorable. the we got the OTP, okay? So adding all these other obstacles, like this other bitch who wants Will's dick, and these other two dudes who are kind of like trying to get into Will's pants as well, these don't make no sense to me because Will only cares about fucking Elfie, right? Getting back to Elfie's side, and she wants to fuck him. So I'm like, there's already an OTP here. So why are you throwing in all these obstacles and baiting? Like, oh, maybe he'll go with this chick. Or maybe he'll go with this dude. Or maybe he'll he'll be with this dude. And I'm like, look, no. Look, man. I, I know it's just bait. But, like, that's where the fanfic writers will get me. <laughs> it's just so obvious that where it's going to head. I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that he doesn't end up with Elfie and, you know. In fact, I think one of the guys is actually Elfie in disguise, to be honest. Like, that's one of the fan theories. What? His roommate. Will's roommate. People have a fan theory that Will's roommate is actually Elfie. Because she has that clone jutsu thing that she can do. So she cloned herself to be a dude. So that way she could always be with Will because she's that obsessed with him. Which I'm like, if that is true, that would be even better. To prove my point about That would about actually the make it. That would actually be crazy, though. Yeah, because it's like everyone else in this world hates Will other than that one girl that likes him because he saved uh, him. There's a bunch of people that like him. Well, actually, I, I there was one arc that I really liked uh, in Wistoria, and that's where Will is fighting against that uh, guy who calls him like um, a lacquered, that red hair fire guy. Yeah. And I'm just like, bro, the sexual tension inside of your relationship is palpable. Like, holy crap. This dude wants to fuck Will so bad. And he's the only reason he hates Will is because, because he, he wouldn't give him attention. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, yes. oh, poor baby. You didn't get your uh, bottom twink to give you some attention. So daddy's mad. And I'm like, oh my God, dude. Like, this show is awful. God, that's such an awful interpretation of that, but I love it. And it kind that of is exa- it's, it's not. It's not that it's my accurate. Shit, it that's... is an accurate depiction of what's happening in the stupid show. You know, you know, I'm I'm more I haven't seen this. I'm more inclined to believe John about it because you're just coping, Jonoda. You want this show to be better than it is. Okay, Look, no, okay, hold on, hold on. I will say the action actually the looks action really is good. fucking good. Yeah, no, it the looks action is good. good. It looks good. Yeah, it's but good action well. does not a good anime make. No, not no, no, slightest. not at all. It helps a lot. And but. yeah, I'm saying it's the worst show because of like all the other stuff. I'm like, you have this really cool concept with the fighting thing, right? If you want to be a serious version of Mashal, that's fine, bro. I'm fine with that. I like but the world you, building as well. But when you throw in the stupid shit about like the the yaoi baiting and all this like relationship shit i'm like this is dumb this is not why is this in here like half of the show is about this 
I don't care about okay, his you're, half. Okay, you're over-exaggerating it. It is half the show. N- not we, half the show. How many episodes did we spend with uh, Flame Boy being upset that Will didn't accept his friendship and just being a little bitch about it? Like two episodes. <laughs> two and a like, half. And it continues because now they're on the same fucking team. Yeah. yeah. So we're all, yeah, exactly. Friendship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, you know, if they explored it more as, like, the guy, he basically is mad because he extended a hand of friendship to Will. Um, basically, like, you know, he, he's a Sundere, by the way. He's a Sundere Yaoi guy, <laughs> by the way. If that, if no one liked, like, uh, what's, like, Bakugo, he's basically Bakugo. <laughs> I hate the fact that you're right, God. <laughs> yeah, I know people hate the fact that I'm right, but I'm right regardless. <laughs> Why are you booing him? He's right. <laughs> Yeah, I you know, I I see inkling of good writing in here, but there's also just other things that I'm just like this is dumb. This is why I don't like the show. It's the worst. I'm excited to see the end of it because I'm like I just <laughs> want the reveal that the roommate is Elfie and then I'll be like finally my OTP has arisen from the ashes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here for the OTP fighting, okay? <laughs> That's honestly I'm why savage. I'm here. <laughs> Absolute savage could care less about the story i just want to win the wife wars <laughs> uh anyway that's that's all i got about wistoria sure it it's better than john how john depicts it like, no I, a lot of people do like it a lot of it is pretty highly rated like i said it's got good action i just feel yeah. like because it's a serious version of mashal it either needs to be more serious and like created with all this yaoi bait crap or just like go full tilt into the yaoi bait stuff like one or the other bro not not this half ass shit i go, don't like go the half-ass full shit. tilt into hardcore yaoi sex <laughs> i didn't say oh, all God, that yes please yes oh. please um speaking of good action i parry everything uh actually does have good action although the mc is dumber than a flying brick i swear to god it's man. So oh, he it's takes funny the that cake. You, you you brought I parry everything up because okay. because you read it. <laughs> I did read the manga, of course, no and surprise. I dropped the manga, and then I went to go watch the anime, and I got to the point where I'm like, I'm gonna go back to reading the manga. Then I went and caught up with the manga. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go read the light novel. As it turns out, <laughs> there's not that much to catch up on. This show came out four years ago. This this light novel came out four years ago. There's not a lot of source material. And I am, like, upset at how slow the translations are for English. Because I'm like, there's they're up to eight volumes only. Okay? That's not a lot. And these books are very short. They're, like, maybe 300 pages. Oh. I'm used to reading, like, 1,000, 1,500 page books for my yeah. light novels. Right? Overlord is kind of a lengthy, girthy boy. <laughs> Like, we're talking 800 pages per to, volume. To say the least. <laughs> to say the least, right? So I'm used to light novels being pretty long. Uh, for this to be half the size of Overlord, and even less than half the size of an Overlord volume, it takes me maybe a, not even a full day to read one volume. So I'm disappointed that there's only... I believe there's six volumes translated total now. Um, or no, five, because I don't think the sixth one is even released yet. And there's only eight total volumes. And I'm just, like, disappointed because basically where I left off in the manga and where the anime is going to leave off is going to be the start of volume or the end of volume three. And I've read up to volume three. And I only have volume four and five. And I'm just, like, and I read those. And I'm, like, so that took me, like, a day. So I'm, like, I'm all caught up. And I'm, like, fuck. Maybe I should just learn to read Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the only way for me to get the rest of this out here right now because apparently I can't have shit in America. <laughs> we can't but, have nice um, things, John. Yeah, the, the story is stupid. It's about a guy who has no magic power and he wants to be an adventurer, but he can't be an adventurer because he apparently wasn't able to like get anything but basic level skills. But his one super strong skill is that he can parry everything. You know, like dragon's and he's breath. He's stubborn as a motherfucker. Yeah, and you know the MC is a goddamn idiot, and I love him. That's why I, I keep reading it because <laughs> I'm like, this guy is so stupid. I I'm a little bit 
ticked off that every single time before he realizes that he's actually strong, he just somehow like goes, "Oh, there's no way I'm that good, dude." Like, huh. I like he he has the mastery in one of the um earlier episodes he'll show off like his magic power, his flame power and um it's like it's a level 1 flame skill spell, sure, but the mastery that he has over it and the amount of power he has in it is amazing. Like his level 1 flame spell is like stronger than a level 5 flame spell. But he can only use the level 1, that one level 1 spell. But it's like that's kind of the gimmick with him, right? He can only use these one level 1 skill from each of the trees or whatever, but he's amazing at it. So it's like he's kind of strong, but not strong because in this world it's like, oh, you can't even cast level five spells. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's fucking knocking armies over just casually. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. just like goes and bodies an entire hundred thousand man army by himself, as you do, <laughs> as you do. Oh, uh, it's a I. It's dumb, but I like the story, and I just I wanted to read more. I'm like, does he ever just stop being dense? And I don't think he's going to stop being dense until the end of the fucking volume. I kind, I kind of think part of the charm is the fact that he's dumb as a brick. Yeah. I mean, like I said, the the fights are cool. Um, it's it's a dumb fucking overpowered MC trope. Like, that's, that is the show in a nutshell. Yeah. But at least the MC doesn't know he's OP, right? And... To be fair, he became OP because he trained so hard. That yeah. is something that actual he did hard work. work. Yeah, yeah, and they show you like the hard work he put in to be able to like deflect a hundred thousand blades at the same time. It's not like he just was like a master at it. It's like no, this dude is trained for like thirty years of his life straight every day, fighting off fucking poison, hunger, all by himself to become super strong. Yeah. Which is why I like something like I parry everything better than like um, Old Man Adventurer to our or Osan yeah. Adventurer, whatever. It's like I like both of them for different reasons. Like they're both the same type of trope of like an old man is super strong, but one guy like literally doesn't know he's strong. The other guy kind of knows he's strong, but that's because he got trained by the S rank. But also he's because he's super strong because he got trained by the S rank. He's also trash because he has no innate talent. If he had innate talent, he'd be even stronger. But because he put in the hard work, he's as strong as he is now. He wouldn't be stronger than the S ranks, but he is stronger than basically anyone else below S rank. Who only relied on their talents to get to where they are, and which is why, like, yeah, it, both shows are about perseverance and, um, what's, what's the thing? Discipline. Stubborn. Hard, oh, discipline. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah discipline. Perseverance discipline, and discipline. Yeah. Both shows are about that, but they go about it different ways. I personally like... I parry everything a little bit more because it looks prettier. <laughs> I don't think the art in um, the Old Man Adventurer one, I don't think the art is that good. It's not. And I hate yeah. the opening song for that anime. Oh, it's so bad. It's yeah. so old school, man. Like, I get that that's part of the joke, but, like, whatever. I didn't really, really want to talk about that one because I think I parry everything is a better show. <laughs> it's not – the stakes aren't as high. Um, again, the action sequences are pretty baller. And the MC's an idiot, so... Like, both of them are kind of whatever anime, but at the same time, they have... They have their charm to it. Yeah. Both have their individual charm, I'll, I'll say that. Um... Yeah, I don't have anything else to say about that one. Okay. Yeah. So, why does nobody remember me in this world? Is an anime that I... It's like Naze, Naze Bokuen, whatever. This is an uh, a manga that I read before that I dropped. Because... My god, is there a lot of talking. <laughs> my god! And the art <laughs> is kind of, like, really weird. It gets really weird. Uh, but the, the overall story is pretty cool. Basically, there's... A world where humans uh, rule because one person called the Prophet Sid, the hero Prophet Sid, sealed away the other races that were warring against them. Um, and there's a main character guy. Don't remember his name. Don't ask me what his name was. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> he is so forgettable. He is. He's generic MC1. Gene? But he's... No, Gene is the no, best Kai. friend. Yeah, Kai. it is Kai. Yes, it, it is Kai. Kai. Yeah. 
So a I'm guy looking, named I'm looking at the two main characters, and one has white hair and one has black hair, so it's got to be one of them. Uh, Gene is his friend. So Kai is the main character, and it's like they they show off like, oh, in this world, uh, because of the prophet Sid, he sealed them away with the beta key or whatever the fuck it was, or a uh, code code breaker, I think it is. World breaker? Code bre- I think it's world breaker. He seals away the other races, and it's like, oh, whatever. And then all of a sudden, the world glitches out, and now he's transported to another world line where Sid never existed. But for whatever reason, Kai grabbed World Breaker, and now he has World Breaker, so he's going to go and beat up all the rest of the, the people. But in this new world, the humans are losing the war, or have already lost the war against the other four races. The I think it's the Angels, the... Um, Demon folk, the angels, folk? demons, spirits, spirits. Elves. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, beast folk. And yeah, beast folk. Yeah. So there's basically four other nations of, or four other races that are warring with each other because they want to rule the world, but also they shit on the humans because the humans have none of their powers. Like certain, like the demons, for example, have like unlimited magic power, and they can just create megaton nukes whenever they feel like at the snap of their fingers. As usual, the humans are seen as cockroaches by all other races. Yeah, because they don't have, like, the strength, the vitality, the uh, longevity, or even magic power to fight against these people. But, the, um, because where Kai comes from, they did win the war, and they they learned how to, like, fight against, like, the other four races. He goes to this new world line and basically tries to get to the bottom of it. Also meeting a, um, a half-angel, half-demon. Name no. Rene? Chimera. She's, 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 she's a Chimera. All, she's all the races. Oh, she's all of them. Yeah, and it's like... So the story is that he's trying to restore the world back to its natural order, or at least what he thinks is a natural order. And he has the Code Breaker now, or World Breaker. And also he meets a Chimera fused of all the other races, which people thought were impossible. So that's the basic story. You know, you can kind of piece together like, okay... It's well, he's, super weird. It's a super weird story, and... That's why I dropped the manga, like, because it gets really weird and confusing, and they talk so much. Um, I'm going to say this. I don't like the anime that much, because it just goes from fight to fight, basically. And not just fight to fight, boss fight to boss fight. And I'm just like, what what is this? What am I watching? This is why it's funny to me, because the anime going from boss fight to boss fight is more interesting to me than their dialogue, 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 boss fight, dialogue, 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 boss fight, bo- dialogue, dialogue. Is the dialogue even interesting? <laughs> no, it's not. It okay. just keeps trying. It's like, if you want to be a light novel, just be a fucking light novel, bro. <laughs> I get that you're trying to expound and tell me about all this world building, but do not do it in a fucking manga. See, it'd be it'd be different if the the dialogue was interesting and it was stuff that you wanted to hear. You know, maybe maybe the light novel is a lot better. I haven't because I dropped the manga. I didn't like where it was going because there was so much talking and not enough fucking fighting. I wanted to get to the bottom of the mystery, but it wasn't interesting enough for me to go and read the light novel. But this you, is why I like the anime adaptation because they're very like accurately hey. described the third season of Slime Tensei. Oh. <laughs> It's Meeting a lot season. of talking. Meeting yeah. season. So, yes. because they don't do all that heavy dialogue shit and they just go fight, I like that. <laughs> Hilarious. We're completely Complete on the opposite ends. You're, you're cutting out the middleman. <laughs> well, because the other shit that they had, the manga, was just trash. So, they got rid of my problem with the manga. <laughs> That's why I like the anime. <laughs> it's... Uh... I don't know. I just feel like there's not much going for it. Not not cool character design, not cool races. I agree. The backstory's I, weak. I at well, best. I mean, the main the main big backstory, the main mystery, right? The main draw is like why does a chimera like Rene exist and why is Kai in this world? What happened to Sid? And why is Kai have uh the world breaker now? It's kind of an interesting mystery, but like well, yeah. that's the main thing that I I liked about it and it just takes so long so long to get to like the interesting bits so you think the pacing on the anime is actually much better than yeah you know? because they don't include all the boring shit the the cool stuff was the fighting i have always liked the fight scenes because i you know i like at at true to the core of my soul i like shonen for fights right yeah 
I think most people can agree most shonens are really good because of the fights inside of them. Yeah. Among other things. There are other things that make shonen great, but most of the most of the draw is going to be a fight. Like I believe Ian was um talking about it last time he was on here with us where like people will see a clip from like <clears throat> season 7 of My Hero Academia and be like, "Dude, that looks so cool. That was such a cool fight." Like what what show is this? I, I want to watch it. And it's like, yeah, that that will draw people in. This cool freaking action sequence will draw people in. And it yeah. definitely has drawn people in. <clears throat> yeah. There's literally uh, an anime this season that I'm going to go check out just because I've seen clips here and there. And I'm just like, yo, that looks like a cool fucking fight. Let me go check this out. Now I'm curious what the anime that is. Uh, Hold on. Give me a second. Let me pull it up. <laughs> he, go he's on, curious go too. <laughs> Oh, no, that's all I wanted to say about um, Naze Bokuen. Why does no one remember me in this world? Okay. Um, the anime is The Elusive Samurai. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. that one's you really read that, good. John. I read that one, and I told you, the anime is actually pretty good. I was worried about it, because what it's going to cover in the anime, uh, story-wise, like, compared to the manga, because I read the manga. I haven't, I've watched the first two, three episodes so far of Elusive Samurai. I haven't caught up with it. Because I already know what's going to happen. And I wanted to wait until the end because I know the climax of the story of Elusive Samurai for the 12 episodes is going to be the hypest part. But uh, the clips and stuff of the fights are pretty cool, too. Uh, I really need I to watch this. highly I've recommend seen the clips. Elusive Samurai. I've seen the clips of the fights. There was the, the most recent episode. I'm assuming it's the most recent episode because it's what I've seen the most of. In yeah, the apparently days. whoever uh, worked on it is like really well known for Sakuga. So I'm just like, okay, let's fucking go. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, the uh, yeah. the the sequence that everyone keeps talking about, it almost looks like it was done with a, a kinescope, and so it looks really cool. I'm trying to think about where they would be right now. This would be episode near the end, right? So is this episode the, like no ten? Is this the fortress battle arc? Is it is it the forces battle where? You, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Neither of us have watched the show yet. Ah, oh, man. Okay, but we're going mind. to. <laughs> I, I fully intend to, mostly because I've been told by John it's a great story. Yeah, But I also have seen the animation, and the animation looks fantastic. I mean, fantastic. like I said, it's, it's an anime adaptation of a historical drama. So it's like, it's great. <laughs> it's a historic... right up my alley. It's right up your alley. Uh, all right. My turn next. Um... Uh... Plus size self. It's literally just fan service. I couldn't get past episode three, bro. Why not? I just, it, it's like the manga. I read the manga or I read the manga. I, I haven't caught up with it anymore because I dropped it after a while. But it's just like, it's a lot more lewd than the manga is. Really? Which yes. Which I don't like. Like, what? yeah, I'm complaining about tits and ass, right? Like, un unspeakable. An anime fan who's not what kind on of red blooded American <laughs> male are you? That Sir. sounds, John. That sounds like communist talk to me. <laughs> Goddamn commies! I swear I'm not a red. <laughs> communist detected on American soil. Goddamn libs! <laughs> I know that's a weird complaint to hear. Right. See, this is where you libtards always go wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Buddy, why. they are literally dummy thick elves. I know. This but... is the Jamaican dream. <laughs> the Jamaican Jesus Christ. I can't explain That's such a to bad you. Stereotype. <laughs> I cannot explain to you why I think the anime is worse in the manga because it's more lewd in the anime than it is in the manga. I can't explain it, okay? I just know that reading it, I it was like, oh, this is kind of funny, ha ha. And watching it, I'm just like, ha, this kind of, oh my god, them some titties. Woo hee! <laughs> like, damn, god damn, boy, she's thick! And the curves on the, whoa, whoa! Now, I want to, now, Chinoda, I am watching this too. And I want to tell you something. As someone who likes my women a little thicker, some of this is just a little too much. <laughs> Some of it, yeah, here and there. Now the main girl, perfect. Absolutely, no, that is the dark elf. Dark elf, fuck out of here. What? Look, I listen. They're both good. Elf Florida. Like like, they're both they're basic. both good, but the but the main girl it got the perfect amount of the, the perfect BMI. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm saying yeah. is, I like women with love handles, okay? 
<laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's the anime has a lot more fan service. I've people love watching things like that. Like I, you know, that's certainly for them. Hmm. I just feel like it's doing a disservice to the comedy aspect of it because of all the focus on the the lewdness. Uh, now, John, if if fourteen year old John were watching this, what would his reaction be? Oh, he'd be like, the anime is way better. Fuck the, the manga. The manga sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Based. For reference, 14-year-olds should not be watching this anime. No, 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 no not at all. Hell, 34-year-olds should not be watching this anime either. <laughs> I remember uh, I downloaded, before we went to, I think it was L.A., Mm. I downloaded a bunch of anime, and I had to ask. I'm like, is Plus Size Elf safe for work? Because I downloaded it, and I'm going to watch it on the plane. But, I, I, yeah, I didn't want to watch it on, in public <laughs> if it wasn't safe for work. D- I remember to say, we, were at the, we were at the airport We were we were we the day we were leaving to go home, and I showed you that on, on my phone. You're like, put that away. We're in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was, it's like, it's definitely not safe for work. I'm like, okay, good. I'm not going to watch this on the plane going home. <laughs> That's why you get a window seat and just, like, angle And tilt it so the person behind me can watch as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not happening. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it's it's literally about <laughs> these various mythical creatures in female form. Um, just doing exercises to lose weight it actually now i will say this it actually does give some good uh exercise advice uh every episode like it's nothing super major but uh, like actual good stuff that any normal person can do and i'm just like okay that's no, pretty cool no. let's be honest here the only exercise people who watch this are performing is playing pocket pool okay <laughs> <laughs> they're exercising their biceps <laughs> they're, doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're doing wrist exercises yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, so that is one of the like nice side pieces, but but no, this is all about just fun fan service uh, with some various mythical creatures in human form. And I'm I'm telling you right I'm now, I'm just there for anime, being horny. This anime exists solely because they want to make figures. That's it. Oh god, I mean, those figures are gonna be, <laughs> gonna be very expensive for like the um one seventh scale ones. Oh my god, yeah. Hey, you've got a lot of extra stuff you got to put on that figure. <laughs> Extra <Just> thickening. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to talk about my last anime. Sure. I'm going to cleanse our palate here and talk about a very cute anime. Uh, the Magical Girl and the Evil Lieutenant is fucking adorable. I've been oh wanting to watch this. I it's you very short. About this during the season preview. It is. Uh, I remember the manga being very popular. I didn't know why. Uh, I I learned why the manga is very popular. <laughs> Because apparently people really liked it, and apparently the mangaka is dead now. <laughs> they passed oh. away. Oh, so um, I believe it's a four coma, and it's only like twenty chapters long. It's not very long at all. Oh, super short. Um, well, it's also an I, anime short too. It's only twelve minutes per episode. Yeah, it's like a ten minute epi- a- anime, piece, you know, minute thirty, minute thirty, three minutes. Oh, really? I thought it yeah. was full on. Oh, that makes yeah, it so much more digestible. Yeah, you could watch it in a single sitting, very, very easily, but. Uh, it's so cute, dude. It's <laughs> the art uh is really good. It looks very cute, and it's as the title says, a magical girl and evil lieutenant, um, are arch enemies. Is they're they're arch enemies, but the, they fall in love with each other. That's it. That's that's the joke, and it's hilarious because <laughs> the evil lieutenant is like a super straight laced guy, and the magical girl is like a broke person where she's like she's um uh, she basically has to take on like a billion odd jobs to afford rent and stuff like that and her her magical partner thing is basically kind of like a yakuza fucking guy trying to <laughs> pour her out what the fuck yeah uh i will say the manga is a lot more lewd than the anime is so i'd i'd very much recommend just watching the anime because reading the manga and i'm just like i want to punch this fucking cat so much like fuck this guy but like fuck kubei but Cubay did nothing wrong. Cubay did everything wrong. No. <laughs> but the the story itself is just cute because it's just about their interactions. Uh, the voice actress actor for uh, the magical girl is she's a very cute voice and she has a very cute character and cu- cute character design. And it's basically just about her being like 
poor and then doing something cute and then the the evil lieutenant guy going like here's the amex black card buy it all buy all the stakes for you <laughs> that's it that that is the joke the running joke the entire time but them slowly coming to realize like well he knows that he likes her but she doesn't know that she likes him but her coming to slowly realize it over this series like i'm excited to watch the final episode the 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 evil lieutenant guy is voiced by Josuke from JoJo's. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a completely different role for this guy. <laughs> is he really that evil? No. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a regular humans. Like he's gonna destroy the world, but he loves uh Byakuya, so <laughs> like he, mm. whenever it comes to her, it's like they're supposed to fight, and it's just like they're just having a picnic in the park. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh my it is God. super cute. It is so cute. Anyway, I recommend watching it. Do not read All it. Right. Watch it. Okay. Okay. Um, guess the very last one. Uh, days with my stepsister. You have I... my attention. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, in fact, the uh, incest season after all. So of course, it is. Oshinoko is airing. Oshinoko. Um. Ali, uh, Ali, uh, oh, yeah, Alia hides her yeah. feelings in Russian. That's right. The, the little sister in that one is super popular. Yeah. She is literally the most popular thing out of the show. Um, um the younger sister in, um, Chika no Konoko, Koshitantan. Oh, yeah. She's so no, 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 horny no, 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 for her no, no, sister. No, 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 no. Yeah. She's yeah. like, oh, this, I'm on. <laughs> like, oh, God. There's more. Why are there so many incest siblings in the season of anime? Yeah, because there's a lot, lot of it. only children in Japan. <laughs> no, I'm just saying this. It just seems like this is the season of incest. Okay, it, it's literally the season of incest. It is, I've been. It it is it, it is odd that there's so many examples in this one season. I'm just saying. <laughs> Has it always been like this, and we just never noticed, or like? Is, <laughs> no, no. Know? This this season is specially like coded in it. Anyway, um, this show, funny enough, has actual good writing, which I fully did not expect because I saw the title and I'm like, okay, probably another funny haha incest um anime, and I'm just like, all right, let, let's see what th what this shit is about. No, it takes itself seriously. It takes its characters seriously, and it builds a budding relationship between them. Now, when you say budding relationship, are you saying they're going to bang? <laughs> a banging Here's the relationship. Thing. So far, uh, like, it literally took them um, up until, like, two episodes ago, which is, like, seven, eight episodes in, for them to even realize they have feelings for each other. But, and this is full spoilers, by the way. Uh, but, okay, so they going to bang. <laughs> but, they, uh, both of them came to the conclusion, wait... This is my sibling. I really shouldn't. So they haven't talked about it, but they start treating each other like they're actual siblings. Because uh, from day one, they're like, sup, you're my new step sibling. And they're like, sup. Like, then we're like, they're complete strangers. And it goes from complete strangers to getting to know each other to siblings, probably lovers in the end. That's probably where the route is going. But it's taking its sweet time, and it's taking its sweet time because it actually shows its characters evolving and actually interacting together. There's a relationship being formed. It doesn't just go to 100. It's, I, it's taking its were, steps. We were this close to greatness. I, I'm thoroughly disgusted by this because I have <laughs> step-siblings, right? <laughs> and... Maybe it's because they – there's this weird fantasy that if you put two hormonal-aged teenagers together that they're going to suddenly just develop feelings for each other and want to bang. But with my interactions with my step-siblings, you know, I've had step-siblings that I, they became my sibling when they were in first grade and a, a couple of other ones, they became my sibling when they were in middle school, so during budding hormonal stages. And it's like I've treated them – as nothing else but my blooded siblings. I'm yeah. not sure if that's because the culture that I'm raised in, like, family is family. It's not about blood. It's about, like, who is your family. Like, we have a yeah. lot of adopted stuff because of wars and stuff like that. It's about family. So, to me, it's like... All right, Wind Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> family. Family. 
So nothing's more important. I, I, than I don't understand the appeal of that. I guess the the idea of it for people who don't have step siblings and understand the nuances of how that works. Like to me, I've always tried to treat my step siblings like my actual siblings. Like even if we were full blooded or not, yeah, mainly same. because, well, like I said, it, I I have a lot of adopted aunts and uncles and stuff like that. I you know my dad was adopted about, into into the family. It's all about the taboo fantasy, John. It's not about actually wanting to do it. It's about the fantasy of thinking about doing it. Yeah, that that's the draw of, all, uh, of it for all of them. It's like, yeah, I I can understand that, but Because humans, me... when they're told not to do something, what do you want to do? You want to go fucking do it! I, yeah, I understand that I, very much. When people tell me not to do things, I do want to go do them. But this is one of those things where I'm like, I don't think I want to do it either way. <laughs> like, you don't have to tell me no. To me, it's just implicit that I should not be doing this. <laughs> they are your sibling. Regardless. To be fair, that's probably a very healthy attitude to have about it. <laughs> I yeah, think it's just a very a normal bit. attitude. Touch grass, to please. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is a very normal thing to have the attitude. Like, I... I remember well, it's that that first one was it Kiss Sis where it's like oh actually you're not blood related and yeah the Kiss twin, X6. yeah the, the twin sisters or whatever or the sisters are like perfect and it's like yo <laughs> hey yo <laughs> now the horny well, levels I, I will say there are obviously people who have gotten together who aren't related and then their parents got together making yeah. them step siblings after the fact yeah that's I've different seen... though. I've seen that in real life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I've seen that. I've seen that in real life too. And it's like, it's, it's different. It's, it's a little awkward. I'm assuming. Uh, but I think that's a little different than, you know, having your step siblings during your formative years. Listen, just go live in New Jersey. As long as you pay taxes there, you can marry whoever you want <laughs> as a consenting adult. <laughs> yeah. You want to go marry your dad? Go right ahead. You can in New Jersey, just pay taxes. Just, <laughs> And the positive side of that is you don't have to be in Alabama. The I'm negative Alabama. side is you're in fucking New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, True. but it's not Alabama. Um. Yeah, no, so this show has actual good writing. I really like the characters. Um, it's taking its sweet time. It does take itself seriously. Uh, there is This is not a rom-com. Like, it's like drama it's a rom, rom. No, it's like drama rom, honestly, more like it. And like, oh, and another great thing, the parents are actually there and they're involved in the kids' lives and everything. Like, you actually see them actually being a family. Are the parents trying just... to push the kids together? Yes, like, that, no. Is that what you're I saying? <laughs> yeah. No. I, was saying. I thought you were like, the parents are actively there, just like in Kiss Exist, where they're like, hey, you're not related, so go ahead and bang your brother. Like, whoa. No, hey, not hey. like that at all. Dear God. <laughs> okay. No. All right. Like they they are there. they're not just the stereotypical anime parents. Oh, they both work overseas. No, like they actually exist. They're there. Um, it's actually really cool. And like that's part of the rem uh reminder for the characters. Like, yeah, we're supposed to be siblings. So like, just keep being siblings uh, instead of maybe confess to the other person that hey, I think I have feelings for you. It's it's interesting. It's good. I like the fact that there's uh good writing like this. It's it's interesting. I like it. Okay. Yeah, and not much else I uh, I can say about it honestly. Other than I don't that. know how the writing could be good in this. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> of romance writing where the taboo is that they're step siblings. Like what kind of it, writing could be good? <laughs> it's the fact that they form a uh, they are forming a relationship, but slowly is what I like. And they they have listen, several episodes I, where they. Hold on, hold on. They have I am episodes not where no, they... No, you listen to me. You listen no, to me, No, fuck Shinoda. you. I was talking no, first. No, 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 no. You need to understand something about the incest taboo, all right? Oh, God. It's the fact that it's a taboo that draws people in, right? That's what oh, the explanation is, right? Literally what Alex okay. said earlier, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, this explains why a show like Orimo is so good. Because yeah. that taboo is something that they go and explore, right? They bitch out at the end, and I'm like, oh, they ruined all your relationships, so that was god-awful. But, point is, they did explore it, and they were blood-related, okay? Yep. They had the balls to do what everyone wanted, which is to show the taboo banging, 
Okay, they had the balls to do this. This show does not sound like it has those type of balls, even though that they're step siblings. They're not even related, bro. That's like half incest. So that's my point about why I think the writing is trash, even though I've never seen a second of this show. <laughs> they, as I was trying to say, they actually have um two or three different episodes where they are actually talking about their uh talking they're thinking from their viewpoint of what happened and like how they're feeling and you see things from their perspective it's really good because it offers you a a point of view from their person instead of watching uh overall it's interesting it's really interesting if they're the main characters it should be from their perspective well, <laughs> right. I'm sorry. I that, should say that, you're, that's you're how seeing, writing works. <laughs> you're seeing it uh, from the perspective of the uh, main male character most of the time. I but... mean, I I understand the appeal of that. Like, it's not like traditional um, incest shows. It's not just baiting it with incest and just doing like, oh, they accidentally walked in on each other naked, and whoa, he accidentally did a perv moment to her, like. The stupid tropes, right? They're yeah. actually exploring the depths of the relationship and how it actually, like, they're doing the psychological aspect of it, which is a lot more interesting than the most common shit that we see in all media. Yeah. Which is. Whoops, I, I slipped in your cock when in my pussy. Oops. It's an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Big brother. <laughs> yeah. Accident. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and because of that, it's just super interesting to me. I, I really like that. I thought okay. I would be dropping it uh, two or three episodes in, but, like, no, it actually has me hooked because of the fact that it bothers to explore the characters. I just and don't understand if they had the str such a strong writing, like, why even make it, like, step-sibling taboo? Why is that a factor? If they want to make a dramatic romance thing, like, I, I don't know. The tension th holding this together is at the fact that they're step-siblings, right? Yes, it is 100% so, that. If that wasn't there, then they would just be able to just date. It sounds I don't like it. No, because that. But the, the only time. reason they are they even have any like relationship with each other at all is because their parents got married. So it's like it's thanks to this step sibling relationship that they even got to know each other. So it's like I, I get that the that's the contention point, right? I, I get that, but it's, I don't know, man. I, I don't think it's going to happen. Can I say something writing. about this? Because this seems to be a trope with a lot of, like, step-sibling anime in particular. Sure. Um, like this. It always comes off as these two characters, whether it's, you know, a guy and a girl, two guys, two girls, whatever. It always comes off as they've never even met each other before the, their parents got married. In the real world, I have to imagine if something like this happened, they would have at least met each other before that point. Right. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. no, my parents but just every... get married without me meeting the other family. Exactly. <laughs> but every single one of them starts off with this assumption like, oh, we're married, we're family now. Hi, I've never met you before in my life. Yeah, like, that's genuinely... another thing that people with kids generally do. They'll try and let the kid meet the other person the partner first to see how it plays out and any and kids then they the have partner yeah and any kids they have then they'll introduce them slowly because it's kind of a how well will we in integrate type of thing it's not a just say oh hey also son i just got married uh this is your new mom and this is your new sister like what but so many yeah, it so doesn't many, work like that so not in anime. the real maybe you know what maybe that's how it works in japan because maybe it, it can't be a trope because it's untrue I don't know. I see I, it so often in anime don't that revolve around judge Japanese this. society with your American standards. I mean, I'm not catalyst. necessarily judging. I'm wondering why it's why is this such a thing? And it, and it, it if it's such a trope, maybe it is true. Maybe this is how Japanese people who are either divorced or widowed and have kids that remarry. Maybe this is how they do it in you their society. I, I don't know. I have several Japanese friends. I will ask them and tell you guys after. I will say, from an outsider's perspective, is that if this is true, it seems like a really great way to sow disharmony within the family. Oh, so easily. <laughs> I know. Are you kidding me? 
It's like, hey, here's new strangers that are your family now. Get along with them. I don't know, Can't that's live just in the same I've house always... as this person that you don't know anything about. Yeah. I, it's just something I've always wondered because I see this so often in setups like this for stories. And I just wonder, like, if, if, is that actually true? Is that how it's done in Japan? Don't know. Never actually bothered to explore. Should probably know that. Yeah. If you know, tell us down below. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm please. genuinely curious. <laughs> anyway, um... I guess that's it. We've gone through all of our lists. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Anime is over for the month. <laughs> thank God. No more anime for the month. The I next can stop month pretending done... to watch anime. Oh, geez. And go back to your light novels and your manga. <laughs> yeah, you can go back to reading it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, the next monthly dumb we have in October will uh, probably have watched the first uh, few episodes of some fall anime. So, hopefully, that should be fun. Oh, hopefully, <laughs> or John will have picked up eighteen new light novels to talk about. <laughs> probably, maybe I don't know. <laughs> but He'll anyway, thank probably you. have a lot of free time by then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, thank you everyone out there for dropping in uh, to watch us. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff if you like what you saw and want to see more. It really does help us out. Also, check down below where you can find links to all the stuff Anime Club After Dark has going on. We also have a link to our merch store down there where you can help us out that way if you would like to. Uh, with that, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Yeah, bye. I just want to say rest in peace, uh, waiter. You were great. One of the goats. Oh, yeah. Yeah, also known as James today. Earl Jones. Yeah. James Earl Jones. Mufasa. Mufasa. Yeah. Mufasa. Literally it's crazy. One he's of... going to be remembered probably largely for those two roles, but he's done so many other ones that are just as good, if not better. <laughs> no, Those seriously. are the only two I know off the top of my head. So, yeah. like. Coming to America. <laughs> anyway, bye!